In this video, I would like to show you how the British Phantoms help protect the Falkland Islands. The British Phantom or F-4K was a modification to the US Navy Phantoms, entering service with both the RAF and Royal Navy in 1969. It featured a new pole Doppler radar and Spey engines, which provided more acceleration at lower speeds than the original engines. The RAS Phantom became the F-4M. Both of these British Phantoms kept their arresto hook, keep this in mind for later. I'll refer to the F-4M as the FGR2. Following the Falklands conflict ending this Tuesday 40 years ago, the RAF sent 10 Phantoms to guard the Falkland Islands from a possible Argentine attack. To this day, RAF aircraft are there on Quick Reaction Alert QRA, to intercept any Argentine intruder. The first Phantoms of 29 Squadron would be deployed to the Falklands in May 1982, and eventually Phantoms from both 23 and 56 Squadrons would spend time in the Falklands before Tornado F3s replaced them. Two Phantom FGR2s were lost, with another damaged beyond repair. However, the Phantom successfully guarded the Falklands from L1AA Electrode patrol aircraft and 707 surveillance aircraft from intruding the Falklands in a conservation and management zone. On Monday 3rd, 1982, three aircraft, having been painted grey over the weekend and receiving flares and chaff at RF St. Athan, deployed to the Ascension Islands, with more Phantoms inbound in the following days. Half of number 29 squadron would be deployed to the Ascension Islands. The flight from the UK took 10 hours, with the Phantoms needing lots of mid-air refueling. By mid-June, the conflict was over, and 10 Phantoms would be sent to the Falkland Islands. But there would be one slight catch preventing the Phantoms from getting there. This was that the first thousand pound bomb dropped by the Black Buck Vulcan had made a crater right in the centre of the runway at Port Stanley. The RAF rang up the US Marine Corps, where they gave over some of their AM2 aluminium matting, with the Royal Engineers creating a new 6,000 feet runway, taking four months. Finally, on Sunday 17th of October 1982, the first Phantom made its way down to the Falklands, taking 10 hours, being refueled by six victors, in a similar pattern to how the Vulcans got down to the Falklands. The revised runway was still too short for Phantoms to do conventional landings, so they treated the airstrip like a carrier deck, this meant using the arrestor hook to stop the aircraft. Following this lone Phantom, the other 9 from 29 Squadron made their way down to the Falklands. One Phantom would spend 24 hours on full alert, whilst the second would take any opportunity to fly. There will be no more than two flights up at once. The sorties last for around 3.5 hours, with refueling from an RAF C-130. The dogfighting capabilities of the crews would be kept to a high standard by training with the Harriers from Port Stanley. Some missions would be at night, crews using MVDs to see in the dark to show the Argentinians that they could fly at night. The living conditions were pretty drab at the base, ground crews being made to work on aircraft in harsh conditions with limited facilities. Crews also stayed on the Rangitira, a ferry ship in Port Stanley. The airframes would be placed under a lot of stress during constant carrier landings at Port Stanley airstrip until RAF Mount Pleasant was made fit for operations. These carrier-like landings got pretty hairy sometimes due to the very unpredictable weather conditions. On one instance, a Phantom managed to land with a 55 knot crosswind, 20 over the safe amount. Another instance of a very close call was when the Secretary State of Defense was visiting the base. A Phantom was launched to prove the operating power of the base, however the weather started to deteriorate with 100 feet overcast. The Phantom came in to land with the arrestor hook ready to catch the wire. However, the wire's drums didn't unwind and the cable snapped under the stress. This in turn ripped off the port stabilator of the Phantom, the pilot braking with the parachute just in time to avoid disaster. From then on, Phantoms would use the parachute just before catching the wire, a technique used by the Israelis with their F4Es. RF Mount Pleasant was finally fit to start with new hangars and facilities for the maintenance crews and on the 1st of May 1986 became operational. The FGR2s would leave the theatre in 1988, being replaced by the Tornado F3s. Nowadays, typhoons look over the Falklands. Now I'm going to talk about two very interesting subjects that the Phantom found themselves in. The first was when a Phantom intercepted an airliner, which turns out to be a spy plane. The second was when an FGR tried to refuel from an Argentine Hercules. 
On Friday, 13th of June, 1986, an intercept was made on an Argentine Air Force aircraft, painted to imitate an airliner. The 707 was presumed to be an Elins aircraft or an electronic intelligence aircraft, like our modern-day RC-135Ws, featuring cameras and surveillance equipment. This Argentine 707 had been intercepted two years prior, leaving Israel for Argentina after receiving several modifications. This probably was when it got refitted to be a surveillance aircraft. The intercept began at 6am, with the FGRs not using any radar, IFF or radio altimeters. Basically anything that gave off any radio wave emissions was turned off. They scrambled, instantly climbing to 25,000 feet, where they leveled off and headed to their vectored point. The pair of phantoms passed through some clouds before emerging, seeing a 707 pass straight over them, heading the other way. They pulled a 180 and loitered below the 707, the navigator trying to count up the amount of antennae on the 707's belly. There weren't any cameras or cheek bulges like those on RC-135s, so it was presumed that it was a communication listener. After taking a metric ton of photos, one phantom proceeded to fly up to the left of the quote-unquote airliner. They rolled, displaying their live weaponry of four Sky Flash missiles and four AIM-9Ls. Finally, after some time, the 707 came to its senses and looked outside, the Argentine crew seeing the phantom. The 707 jerked towards the phantom as if trying to force it out of the sky. However, the FGR simply rolled over the nose of the 707 before lighting the burners and banking off for home. Now, the second peculiar incident was with an Argentine C-130. An ice cap had broken off near Argentina and the scientists where they wanted to get photographic data. After much discussion, they were flying an Argentine Air Force C-130 over the Falklands Inner Conservation and Management Zone. Two Phantoms would escort the C-130 through. Upon observation, the C-130 appeared to be similar to those that the RF were operating and using to refuel the Phantoms. They also seem to resemble USMC, KC-130s used for mid-air refueling. After some time, the pilot, squadron leader Archie Liggett, got bored. The slow 300 km an hour cruising speed of the Hercules was too slow for his Phantom and decided to have some fun. He discussed the idea of mid-air refueling with his navigator before reaching down to the fuel panel and flicking the switch for the refueling probe. The aircraft made a few noises as the refueling probe came out, out of the flush fuselage taking another glance at the crew of the Hercules, who were now looking at the Phantom, with increasing amounts of faces filling each window in the Hercules. Archie then said, I'd like some fuel please, then assumed the refueling position. To their surprise, the drogue started to make its way out to the Phantom's probe. However, it stopped and began to be reeled in. The Phantom moved back to be in line with the cockpit of the Hercules. Archie grinned and waved, and then flew back with the other Phantom to home. Three years later, Archie would meet a senior RAF officer and to his surprise was on that Argentine C-130. What a coincidence. Well, with that funny story, that concludes this video and thank you for watching.